Excuse me, excuse me. My name is Elgin Tremell. Uh, I'm the leader of Bloods. I started Bloods. Basically, what I'm going to do in this video is just answer, uh, answer some questions that's being asked to me by Kev Mac and bring to light about this bullshit that's been going on between Bloods and Crystal Lama. Where'd you grow up at? Uh, I grew up on the east side, uh, Colton and Avalon. Um, I went to Faith Lutheran Private School. Uh, from Faith Lutheran, I went to Lutheran High School. I went to school with uh, James Kendall Hahn, the mayor of Los Angeles. Janice Hahn, uh, Congresswoman, uh, no, she's the Board of Supervisors now for, uh, for the city, for the county of Los Angeles. Uh, we all grew up together. All right, tell me about the Apple Hat Gang. Apple Hat Gang, it started, I, I would guess, around about 68, 67, 68. I didn't, become, I, I didn't become an Apple Hat until about 69, July, in fact, July 19th. I don't know, I would say about July 20th or 21st of, uh, of 1969. That was, uh, my birthday was July 19th. <clears throat> I just came back from Alabama. I stayed in Alabama uh, with my grandmother for, uh, for the 11th grade. Going went to Baldwin County, uh, Baldwin County Training School because my mother and father was going through a divorce. When I came home on July 19th, the, night, the day of my birthday, and my mother called me and said, I'm giving a birthday party for you. She, she wouldn't stand my father when they got divorced and everything. She was staying on Gage in Vermont. So I took call. My father called. He was at work for the post. He was working in the post office. He called me and said that uh, I told him I'm going to my mother's house for a birthday party. She said, remember the party? He said, if you took your black ass over there, don't never come back here. So I hadn't seen my mother, so I went over there. So I, um, when I got over to my mother's house, there was one girl at the party. That was uh, the landlord's uh, daughter. And there's nobody else but me and her. So I'm standing in front of the apartment on Gage and uh, Vermont, and I see some kids across the street. I walk across the walking down uh, Vermont towards Gage. I say, I yelled, I say, man, we're having a party over here. That was Michael Harris, Daryl Harris, and Rhonda Harris. So we came over there, we got the party, we partied all night long. So when uh, the party was breaking up, I asked Michael, remember y'all be hanging? They said, we'd be, we'd be at Harvard Park. I said, okay, I'll be up there tomorrow then. So the next day, which was July 20th, I'm walking down Gage, heading up to Harbor Park. I ran across Earl Brown. You see, we're staying on Gage. I said, "Now what you doing over here?" Him and Michael Brown. I said, "As we moved over here." So we walked. Me and him walked to the park together, and we got Michael Harris, and I met everybody else from the Apple Hats, and that's how it became an Apple Hat. So who was Michael Harris, the leader or something like that? Michael Harris, uh, he was one of the founders of the Apple Hat. Eddie Watts was the leader of Apple Hats. Mary Jones, Johnny Boy, and Michael Harris, they were all like founders of the, uh, of the uh, Apple Hats. Who was the Tanger Ray guy? Tanger Ray was Freddie Clark, uh, Dusty, McCoy. They stayed over on 77th and uh, Central, back over in that area. Uh, that was um, Terry Montague's... Uh, Nephew. What year did you guys start fighting the Crips? That was in 1970, May of 1970. I say May, April, May of 1970. And how did that start? Behind bullshit. Uh, there was three of us going to uh, going to uh, Freeland High School. Three uh, Apple Hats. Uh, myself, Bear, and Twin Rich Gaither. I would have Raymond Washington and Bulldog. They were friends of mine. Mm -hmm. They would they would they call themselves the Cribs, the Baby Avenues. I walked to school with Twin and Bear and uh, walk home and walked to, to and from school with them. But when I got to school, I hung with Raymond. Raymond and them, they would lift their weights, they were muscle bound, and they used to walk. With, you know, you have, you, your muscles is tight, and they think they walk, it'd be swollen. They can't, you know, they can't bring it in. So I'd be sitting over there with Twin, I mean, I'd be sitting over there with uh, Raymond and Bulldog, doing lunch, nutrition, you know, breaks between classes, and Twin and Bear would walk by and say, look at those and hang, hang over some no walking muscle bound foods. I tell the Raymond they may ignore that shit. Raymond and they ignored it and they ignored it and they ignored it. And then one day they said got tired of it, Twin and Bear talking about them. I came outside of Fremont on the San Pedro side to meet uh Twin and Bear to walk home from school. I see the school police bringing Twin and Bear back inside the school. I'm in the back of the crowd. I hear Raymond the Bulldog. Let's go find Elgin. 
I'm a little bitty fool. I'm going to let these big niggas beat my ass. They went inside the school to look for me. I hauled ass to the house. So the next day, uh, we call them at nutrition time at Bethune Junior High School. Uh, that time they went in bald heads. We, we simply jumped on the uh, Bethune Junior High School, slept upside the heads and everything else. Uh, at lunchtime, when we came in the Fremont side of the San Pedro side of Fremont, uh, twin, I mean, uh, Bulldog and Raymond, they would be in the, in, in, in the quad. So we knew exactly what it was. We came in there and we got to, we, we could have missed the fight in there. They broke and ran towards the football field. When we chased them towards the football field, Tango, the Tango Rays, Freddie Clark, and Dustin McCoy and them, they came in from the Avalon side where the football field is. They came over the fence and through, uh, through the gates and everything. We caught them in a pinch in the middle. We whipped their ass on the football field. About two days later, we sit sitting at the uh, team post on 65th and uh, Hoover. And I'm, I walk outside and I look down towards Florence and Hoover. I see a gang of people standing in the middle of the street down there. I looked. I said, what's this? I'm thinking an accident or something like that. And then all of a sudden I saw them getting in a military formation start marching down uh, from uh, marching down Hoover from Florence towards where we were. And I knew it was the Cribs. I went back and said, hey, here comes uh, the Cribs coming over here. So we all came outside. We got to fight. It was about dust dark. I had a crib on the ground like this, and I look up. Somebody's standing out. I can not know who it was. I can't tell who it was. Somebody's standing up and get the shooting up in the air. That broke up the fight. Everybody got to running. So, like I say, the first bad word, the first... Gun pulled out, the first blow was thrown, I was there from day one. What year did the Brams come out? Brams, uh, we got our name, I would say about maybe 72, that's when we changed our name to Brams. Uh, <clears throat> it was at Earl Brown and Punkin. We had our headquarters that time on 65th and Vermont. Um, Earl Brown and Punkin came in, they had some long trench coats on and some white brim hats. And we looked, I said, man, shit, that ain't, man, them trench coats, we could hide our sawed off shotguns up under and our some machetes up under the, uh, the trench coats. I said, man, it looks good right out there. So we started to wearing brims. We started, we, we started stealing from our Salvation Army, and we started wearing brims instead, and we changed our name to brims at that time. So that's how brims came about. Yep, yep, because of Earl Brown, William Earl Brown, and, and Punkin. <laughs> and who were some of the founding members? Of the brims? Yes. Um, that would be myself. Uh, Earl Brown, Michael Harris, uh, Michael Brown, uh, Curtis Ray Weaver, uh, Winston Weaver, uh, Lonzo Coleman, uh, Felix and Lee uh, Holman. Uh, damn, there's so many. <laughs> so many. Uh, cool Breeze, Louis Lovely, uh, Cooney, man, <laughs> Bear, Twin, <laughs> Reggie Gaither. <laughs> <laughs> what was the original name? Original L.A. Brims or just Brims? We just Brims. Brims. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what was Ground Zero? What was your first first spot where it took off? At? John Muir, Junior High School. And John Muir was a home school for the Brims. Home school for the Brims. What about high school? Where did all the Brims go to high school? They went. Um, Georgia Brims went to um, Manuel's High School. Uh, they went to Manuel's and went to John Muir. Uh, three of us, there was only three of us that went to uh, uh, Fremont. That was me, Reggie Gaither, who, they, uh, by, uh, who also was called Twin, and Bear. I forget Bear's real name. Uh, us, we, the three of us, the only ones that went to uh, Fremont. And where'd you guys hang out at? Uh, we hung out at Team Post on 65th and Hoover. We hung out at John Muir. Uh, we had, there was an apartment, there was a still some apartment buildings on the corner of 65th of Vermont. Uh, there was a lot of empty apartments, so there was our headquarters right there. We used to be in there. And we just go and open up an apartment, we just hang in the apartment. Was it a famous hangout on 59th of Vermont? Some, some uh, Doe had mentioned that to me. Uh, basically, you're talking about, uh, what was the snack track? Okay. There, there, was, there was a hamburger stand across the from John Muir. Yeah. Was uh, any F-13 in the area during that time? If they were, they wouldn't kick them no dust. And what about Harbor Park? Did y'all hang up there? We, when we first got in, yeah, we had Harbor Park, but then we 
got it. There was a uh, that was when we were at, we were at Apple hats. There was a white hats on the other side of Normandy. And Gage, so basically they had Harbor Park. Um, we finally got control, complete control of Harbor Park. Um, this was ooh, I forget what year it was, but the way we got it was the Apple, the uh, White House gave a party of on Gage, uh, the uh, two blocks west of Normandy, and we were at the party that night and. The, uh, one of the homies got into a, got into an argument with one of the apple hats. I hauled off over the crowd with my long arms, reached over and bop, bopped them in his head. Ada Watts came in and got on my got, got on my ass about getting some shit started. So the next day, me and Winston Weaver we went up to Harbor Park, and the same the same person I hit the night before, he come he come around the corner. He had a, he had a uh, bicycle sprocket in his hand, you know the uh, the sprocket with the handle and and had that in his hand. He said, "I'm going to kill you now." So homeboy all fall off and hit me right here, right? So hit me the first time, I got the bleeding, blood out of my eyes. I grabbed him. I put him on the ground, choking him like this, and uh he still hit me with the bicycle sprocket. So I realized, hey, I'm gonna have to kill him, he's gonna kill me. So I continued choking. I finally he was out of breath and went out like this and the bicycle went out of his hand. That was it. We got to Harvard Park after that. I bled for that part. <laughs> <laughs> when did you guys start identifying with the color red? Uh, that would I would say that would be about just offhand guess. Um, I need to call my cousin earlier, Michael, and say I'm get a verification from them. But I believe it was about 72, 73. It's after we became Bloods, after we started uniting with all the Bonnie Hunters, uh, Pyrus, and other different blood sets. That's when we that's when we started calling ourselves Bloods. So you aware about uh, AC's claim about California Youth Authority's where it started, right? AC, hey, homie, I haven't talked to you. I know I'm in your book to start lining up the origin of the origin of the Bloods and Crips, but that's wrong. <laughs> it did not start on the CYA. So when when the Pyrus and Bounty Hunters formed the friendship, what was the brims at? Pyrus, let me put it this way. Pyrus came in came in with with us because my brother Jeffrey Johnson Jackamore and my cousin Daryl Glover of Sugarloo from Campanella Park Pyru, that's my family. By them being my family, that's how Pyru came in with us. Uh, Bond Hunters came in because uh, Ray Boys, Tavi, O. T. We uh my homegirl Sharon, Tav, Terry Montague's niece, Freddie Clark's uh, cousin, stayed over in the Nixon Gardens. When we go pick up Sharon, we're going out partying, we'll sit there and be in the parking lot, be about five, six, seven, ten carloads of brands sitting out there. So Bonnie Hunters and Brands were out there in the mingling with each other and we became friends. So that's how Bonnie Hunters and Brands came in together. What was the Brands first hand sign? First hand sign? What's the universe? Uh Eddie Jones made this came at this time, he, he, said, he said at that time, Viva La Brims. The Viva Brims. And that was in, uh, at 1322 West Gage and Earl's, Earl Brown's uh, back house back there. We sit back there smoking weed, <laughs> and Edward Jones came up with the Brims sign. 